Now, on Emeritus News Brief, I'm Lynn Houston. A big month ahead for Congress. The first big pressing problem, what to do about the unemployment benefits extension, which is set to run out December 31st. When the extended unemployment benefits bill was signed by President Obama November 6th, it included 14 more weeks of compensation, with a total of 20 more weeks for states where the unemployment rates are higher than 8.5 percent, which meant the benefits were to continue through at least January of 2010. But no one remembered to amend an earlier authorization deadline of December 31st. So the extended unemployment benefits are set to expire December 31st, unless both houses pass something to correct it. Backers are confident that something will be worked out to avoid any problems. In addition, there's also a push from President Obama and congressional leaders to come up with a comprehensive jobs bill as part of next month's Jobs Summit at the White House. Next week, I'll be meeting with owners of large and small businesses, labor leaders, and non-for-profit leaders from across the country to talk about the additional steps we can take to help spur job creation. I'll work with Congress to enact those proposals quickly. And it's my fervent hope and my heartfelt expectation that next Thanksgiving we will be able to celebrate the fact that many of those who've lost their jobs are back at work. And that as a nation, we will have come through these difficult storms stronger, wiser, and grateful to have reached a brighter day. Toyota has promised to fix accelerator pedals in hundreds of thousands of their vehicles built from 2004 to the new 2010 models. Toyota has also promised to fix a problem with spare tire support structures on 2000 to 2003 Tundra trucks, which can rust, fail, and release the spare tire into oncoming traffic. More on the Toyota recalls on the Emeritus News Consumer page. The Consumer Product Safety Commission is taking heat for their slow response on what now has become the largest crib recall in history. The recall involves more than two million cribs from Stork Craft Manufacturing of British Columbia. The cribs are suspected in scores of injuries, including four deaths due to entrapment and suffocation. The cribs were made between January of 1993 and October of 2009. More on the Emeritus News Consumer page. Consumer advocates say banks are already trying to find loopholes in the recently passed Credit Card Accountability, Responsibility, and Disclosures Act. For example, the act prohibits over-limit fees unless consumers agree to have over-limit transactions approved. But credit card companies are continuing to approve over-limit purchases without the consumer's approval, then demanding that the over-the-limit amounts be paid in full and are charging an over-the-limit fee but calling it a late fee. The tactic can also push the consumer into becoming 60 days late and subject them to a retroactive rate increase. Consumer groups are asking federal officials in Congress to take action. More controversial credit card transactions on the Emeritus News Consumer page. The Centers for Disease Control saying that despite all the doomsday rumors about the new mutations of the swine flu virus, the vaccine is effective against them as well. These include mutations reported in the U.S., Norway, and Ukraine. The vaccine data so far really suggests this is a safe vaccine. We've also looked in a little more detail at severe allergic reactions, something called anaphylaxis. And again, those um, are not showing up more commonly than we would expect. So this first report that we're giving you about vaccine safety is very reassuring. And we know that a lot of people have been waiting for this report, and we think it's good news. Um, we're seeing an increase in serious pneumococcal infections around the country. Um, flu infections can increase the risk of pneumococcal disease. Pneumococcus is a bacteria that commonly infects the lung or sometimes the bloodstream. In a typical non-pandemic year, most serious pneumococcal infections occur in people 65 and over. In previous pandemics, there has been an increase in pneumococcal infections in younger people. It turns out that in the 2009 pandemic, we are seeing an increase in pneumococcal infections in younger persons. President Obama's decision on Afghanistan troop strength is expected to be revealed December 1st. The president is widely reported to be ready to send another 30 to 34,000 troops to the country to stabilize it against Taliban insurgents. Defense Department officials say they are ready. And the Obamas seem to have a good Thanksgiving holiday, including the annual pardon of the turkey. This one, all of 45 pounds, was subjected to the usual government accounting principles as part of the pardon cost analysis. You are hereby pardoned. You will live in Disneyland. 
So today, all told, uh, I believe it's fair to say that we have saved or created four turkeys. <laughs> you know, there are certain days uh, that remind me of why I ran for this office. And then there are moments like this where I <laughs> pardon a turkey and send it to Disneyland. <laughs> and 20 years ago, this Thanksgiving, the first President Bush issued the first official presidential pardon for a turkey. Now today I'm pleased to announce that thanks to the interventions of Malia and Sasha, because I was planning to eat this sucker, <laughs> Courage will also be spared this terrible and delicious fate. The latest on the biggest issues and public policy at emeritusnews.com and live 24 hours, seven days a week on the Emeritus News Channel at Livestream.com. That's an Emeritus News Brief. I'm Lynn Houston.